welcome guys here's another podcast episode i am purposely releasing this on valentine's day because it's the day of love what better way to, to show you guys love than to release a podcast episode full of still based knowledge and and awesome warrior stories um in this episode i got uh, fred moore from still Mace nation if you haven't checked out his uh podcast his podcast is all about stalemates just like mine. And it's really awesome to, to have two podcasts um, going around. I know there's several other ones. Um, I, I'm pretty sure there is, but they're always kind of like a mixture of, of topics. So um, this one's really awesome. Uh, me and Fred talked about doing a podcast and kind of trading. I'd be on his and he'd be on mine. Um, so I had him on mine first. And uh, I'm just really excited for you guys to get to know him. His background is is pretty amazing. Um, obviously, tactical firefighter um, with with a with a great story, guys. So you know, listen up, uh, open up to Fred. Really awesome dude. Um, he's been doing his part in the community to spread mace and to interview as many people as as he possibly can. You know, I think that's one thing that we could relate when when we were talking on the podcast. It's it's, it's really hard to keep up with the still mace community because it's growing so rapidly. Um, I know I've had trouble with with picking guests and and it's been hard to to just have all of you guys on here you know if you're a coach and you're listening in it's 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 it trust me i'll get to you at some point and I, and i'm always eyeing you guys and if you're an enthusiast please reach out i i really want to have enthusiasts on the podcast so far i've reached out to a few a few of you said i'm too shy for that or uh you know maybe another time so that's okay uh you know i love you guys uh, but if you're an enthusiast and you want to be on the podcast just hit me up uh, I'd love to talk Mace with you. And uh, I also wanted to say happy Valentine's Day. I hope you guys enjoy this podcast. And by the way, um, if you haven't got your hands on my 30 Day Still Mace program, make sure to go get it today. It's on sale. It's usually $29. I dropped it down to $15 for you guys. Um, you don't have to enter a promo code or anything. All you got to do is head over to the stillmacewarrior.com store or uh, go to stillmacewarrior.com backslash store. Okay, so that's your link right there. Uh, get yourself a 30-day stillmace program. It's great for weight loss, for um, for strength, warrior strength, and for vitality. Okay, so um, great little beginner 30-day uh, program as well. So it doesn't matter what fitness level you're at. I added um you know modifications to the reps and sets and stuff like that so um and even the exercises and you'll also find uh some mobility drills to to help you recover you know throughout uh, the 30 days but anyways go check out the 30 day still mace program it's 15 dollars for valentine's day and and again if you guys want to support this podcast you can also buy yourself a t-shirt over at the store you'll probably see them on there um you know grab yourself one tag me on instagram tag me on facebook wherever and uh guys thank you so much for for keeping um you know for keeping up with my podcast and and being patient as well i've, I've become a little slower with releasing podcast episodes but i'm still here and uh, i really hope you enjoy this one we really get down and, and talk about all sorts of things mace so let's get into that now What's up, Still Mace Warriors? I'm so excited today. I mean, I'm excited in every podcast episode. I repeat that over and over again. But uh, today's actually pretty, pretty epic. Uh, I have with me Fred Moore. Did I say your last name right? Yes, you did. Okay, good. I figured more. Like, yeah. I want more. Yes. <laughs> Anyways, more right? Uh, <laughs> but yeah, I'm super excited to have you. Um, you are uh, obviously the only other podcast that is like straight up still Mace, which we were kind of talking about right now, and we'll get into that. But I'll go ahead and kind of introduce you. This is what I got off of, you know, your website and your Instagram and stuff like that. But uh, you're a NASM personal trainer, still Mace coach. Uh, obviously, I think you, you're still Mace flow, right? Yes. Yep. And uh, you're a firefighter, correct? Yeah. That's awesome. And obviously the podcast host for Still Mace Nation. So welcome, man. Thank you, Victoria. I mean, this is awesome. You know, um, I think uh, back when I started this podcast, it was, it was June of 2019. And um, I just want to come right out of the gate here and say that you are responsible for this podcast. And, oh, right um, on. <laughs> yeah, you are. Um, I don't know if you remember um, a lot of stuff was going on and I know you're super busy and everything, 
but I had another podcast before this one and yeah, it was, right. yeah, it was, it was like for firefighters, tactical athlete type stuff, which I'm still heavily into. Um, but I saw your podcast and I was like, oh man, this is cool. And I love your podcast. I, you know, uh, check it out all the time. I love you. You're, you're such a dynamic person and you're very good at what you do and it's kind of inspirational. And so I hit you up and I said, Hey, why don't we do a guest for guest podcast? This is back when I had the old podcast and, you know, I guess, you know, it was hard to, to, um, kind of for you to, to, to understand what my podcast was. It was just like firefighter who works out. And, you know, and I totally get it, you know, like, you know, how does it link up? And there was, it, 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 we just kind of missed each other. We just didn't quite connect. And um, that ended up creating a little ripple effect in me. And it was interesting because I actually look back, I had about 20 episodes in. And if you look um, that the, the lifespan of a podcast, like if you can make it 13 episodes, they say you're pretty much good to go. So I was already past that point, but I wasn't happy with it. And um, mm. I was actually, <clears throat> I, I didn't feel uh, comfortable doing the podcast for some reason. And I loved that you were doing something about Steel Mace. And back then I was only about a few months into, into Steel Mace, but I was seeing how awesome it was for me. What it was doing for me was magnificent. And right. I realized I was on a special journey with it. Like, like all of us, you know, right. we all go down this journey, right? It becomes like this new chapter in our life, the mace. So yeah, yeah. here I was and I said, this is great. You know, I want to, I want to do a podcast too about the steel mace and it's going to be about my journey. You know, it's going to be yeah, about yeah. how it's affecting me. And the most interesting thing about it is the people, right? You come into contact with all these people and, um, the, the, conversations I'm having. It's like one big happy family. Right. So, you know, I, I, I revamped the podcast. I got rid of the old one, started Steel Mace Nation. And um, ever since then, I've been like, I got to hook up with Victoria, <laughs> right. I do a podcast with her. Yeah. This is going to be so cool. So I'm so excited about this today. Thank you very much for having me on. Hell yeah, man. No, I, I remember you having a different podcast, but at the moment I was like, is this the same guy? I was so confused. Like it wasn't even you. It was just Instagram is so confusing for me sometimes. So I was like, yeah. Oh, is he still Mace Nation now? Am I still talking to the same guy? Like it was really confusing time for me, but it's mm -hmm. cool that you cleared that up. Yeah. Cause uh, now I know that I wasn't crazy. I'm like, I know this guy had a different podcast before. Yeah. Yeah. Right yeah, on. And, and, and you're right. It is confusing. It's very confusing. Uh, everybody in my life, like my immediate life, uh, friends, family, they can't even keep up with what is going on here. The steel mace is like a rocket ship <laughs> that goes light speed like this. And I'm not even able to keep up. Yeah. I have gone through the past 13 months. I have gone through some of the most amazing changes with my life. And a lot of it has to do with the steel mace and how it's opened up a whole new doorway for me to enter into a whole new universe almost. And it's, it's like a, a shape shifting thing right now. I can't even quite put my finger on it, most of it, but I could tell you one thing. I figured out a lot of things and I've grown a lot. And, you know, I'm at a stage in my life where a lot of people sometimes stop growing. You know, they mm -hmm. kind of settle, you know, and instead I'm ready to dig my teeth into life and chew it up and just keep going. I don't see an end to it. And I'm moving at light speed and everybody, like I said, is just like, what is going on here? I'm teaching steel yeah. mace classes now. Um, I'm finding ways to incorporate it into the fire service. And uh, the podcast is one of my favorite things to do. Um, it's like my uh, hobby plus my, my outlet for uh, creativity. Right on. Tell me a little bit more about the incorporating into fi the, to your firefighter stuff. That's interesting. That's, yeah. that's new to me. Yeah. So um, I, if you go on my podcast, I talk a lot about how, well, I'll have guests on. Like recently I had episode number 43 with Neil Kenner. He's out of Austin, wow. Texas. And he teaches, he teaches tennis. He coaches tennis at SMU. And, um, he, th and he said it himself the steel mace is going to be a game changer for, um, for tennis. 
And it's the same thing with, with uh, fire service. And, you know, it's like uh, for the fire service, I think in terms of tactical athlete, um, that's how I approach it. I know uh, some people might look at me a little weird about that. Like, what are you talking about? Well, it's a lifestyle thing. You know, if you think about baseball, right? Uh, baseball players, they play like, I, I think they play like 130 games a year. And um, it's like a longevity thing. So they have to take care of their bodies. They have to eat right. Um, they have to stay in shape. So with firefighting, I see it the same way. Okay. So it, it's the same thing with um, cops, military you know, you're doing an athletic event and it's not really under optimal conditions ever. And it's right. very strenuous. It's very hard. There's a lot of injuries on the fire ground, knees, back, shoulders. Uh, we just had a fire yesterday when I was on shift and one of the guys hurt his knee really badly. He, he felt it pop. Oh, um, wow. So I feel that, you know, if we train our bodies like uh, tactical athletes, we will perform better. You know, we're optimizing ourselves. We're going to perform better and we're going to stay healthier longer. And one of the number one uh, deaths for firefighters is, is cardiac arrest. You know, 50% wow. of firefighter fatalities are because of our heart related strokes or something like that. Wow. So um, how do I see the steel mace being incorporated in is how it's worked in my own life. Uh, about a year ago, I would say right before January of 2019, I felt like a broken, beat down dude. You know, uh, the fire department was um, 16 years on a job, getting beat up a lot, a uh, young daughter that I was raising, and I just couldn't see myself uh, like lifting weights anymore. I was like hurting all the time. Mm. Well, when I, got, uh, when I got a steel mace in my hands, it's, it changed very quickly for me. I noticed I was able to deal with stress better. I was able to um, sleep better, which is a big one. In the fire service, you know, um, sleep is a major issue. And uh, we could get into bad circadian rhythms and it gets, it could be a disaster sometimes. Wow. So that and, and just staying mobile, feeling better. Um, and what do you do after a long, hard shift? you can't necessarily go deadlift like a ton of weight or squat a lot of weight off the, you know, you're, you're, right. you're already in um, a pretty rough state. Your cortisol levels are high and everything. So guess what? A little steel mace flow and it resets everything. And um, it's, it's really an amazing thing. Uh, I, in fact, episode 50, which um, right now, as we're speaking, Ep we're on episode 44, so I decided episode 50, that's going to be a big milestone for me. Right we're going to do on. a solo cast, and it's going to be about what we're talking about right now. I'm going to be discussing how it could help in the fire service. But this, like I said, goes for athletics across the board. And I think as Steel Mace becomes popular and more popular and it continues to grow, you're going to start seeing you know, major sports uh, players using the Steel Mace to augment their fitness program. And just like uh, Neil Kenner said about tennis, it's going to be a game changer for sports. Yeah, I think a lot of people are having a hard time seeing mace as something that, that athletes can use and stuff like that. So it's going to be really awesome. You know, obviously us having these podcast episodes and, and throwing them out there, your episode with Neil, it's, it's informational. And I'm glad that we're putting it out there because, um, you know, I, I work along with my sister-in-law and she does Olympic weightlifting and she's really big on the Olympic weightlifting and it being great for athletes. And then I, I talk about the maze and she's just like, yeah, you know, I, I guess it could, you know, so it's really cool to throw that out there and let people know like, yeah, the maze has really awesome benefits for athletes and in your case, right. For firefighters and right. it's a very functional tool. So, I mean, that leads me to asking you like, what is it about the mace in your opinion uh, that actually works? Why does it work for you? Okay. So um, it's very versatile. You know, I right. can use it in so many different ways. I am still the type of guy that likes to go heavy with stuff. I still like my traditional weight training and guess what? I still like grabbing a really heavy mace. And, um, I just recently competed in the vintage strength games in Miami. Right. I swung a 25 pound mace for, uh, five minutes and it was grueling and it was awesome. Um, and nothing better than just really kicking your own ass. Right. But, 
at the same time, if I come off shift from work and, and I just need to kind of like de-stress and get myself back into like a, a very mellow state so I could just relax, I'll, I'll just do grab a 10 pound mace and I'll do a flow. I'll even grab the wooden primal flow mace, which, right. you know, what's that like three or four pounds and I'll, and I'll just, you know, kind of like practice patterns with it, you know, so it's not really doing anything to my body. It's not taxing me in any way, but it's allowing me to tap into the creative aspect uh, of this, of that side of the, the training, you know, with my mind and utilize my mind in a way, get it disengaged from, you know, you know, maybe uh, if I'm stressed out or whatever and put it into a, a better state or a frame. And, you know, between that and going heavy and then the way I use it as a tool when I coach my clients, that is one of the biggest things because I could use it as an assessment tool and I could tell if a person has muscle imbalances and things like that. And they don't even know that I'm checking them out. You know, I'm just asking right. them to do like a side lunge and there's, there's that knee collapsing in and they're not activating their hip. And now I know how to train them better. Um, or I use it as a warm up tool or a cool down, you know, we'll cool down from a workout. Um, it, the versatility of it is, is ridiculous. And, you know, you could use it for 10 minutes and get something out of it, or you could use it for three hours and get something out of it. Right. And it, it's all across the board. And there's so many different maces out there now that you can do different <laughs> things with that. Like the addicts mace has the skinnier handle. So that's more of a challenge on, on your grip. Um, there there's loadable maces and it's and then and, and then there's the, the whole thing with clubs too so right, all right. the rotational movement patterns and everything and that that is a big one because I come out of like uh, yeah I started training when I was 19 years old uh, I had a really bad back injury I was like mm. I was skinny and um, I didn't work out I smoked cigarettes and I listened ah. to thrash metal all the time which <laughs> I still do but I don't smoke the cigarettes anymore um, I had a sciatic injury, which is, you know, for uh -oh. 19 years old, that's ridiculous. Yeah, yeah. And um, I started weight training and I, you know, I, I was doing the traditional stuff, Arnold Schwarzenegger stuff, you know, which is fine. But yeah. I never trained in uh, the transverse plane ever. I never did anything rotational. And when you're young, you can do whatever you want. But as the years go by, you start noticing, hey, you know, I can't put my hands above my head anymore. <laughs> I can't, you know my, my, my quads are carrying the load on everything. You know, I have muscle imbalances everywhere. Use a steel mace and straightens you right up. And that's what I love about it. Right now. I, I want to actually go into the vintage strength games. Cause I saw you over there. I, I was like, I need to bring this up in the podcast. I myself have not been able to travel out to Florida. It's too far for me, but I saw you there. I saw you interviewing people. I saw you actually participating let listeners in on that event because I know it's still not that huge and I'm pretty sure everyone's wondering what is that like? Yeah, I'm glad you're asking that, Victoria. You know, this is, this is a, a one thing that needs to get out into the MACE community. Um, the, the Vintage Strength Games, obviously, as it sounds, it's, it's strength. You know, we're not doing flow in those games or anything, but they have big plants, and it just, they need room to grow. Just like this, how this whole mace thing, every day there's a new development, right? And so uh, the best thing is, is that everybody over there put their heads together and they got this thing started. Right. And they started it well. You know, you got uh, Frank DeMeo from Mace Fit. You got Don from Addicts. You got uh, Valerie Pulaski from um, Vintage Strength Training. She's in North Jersey. She's a neighbor of mine. Uh, you got Brad, uh, Mace Works Brad. You know, he, right. they're all integrated together. And they came up with, it, I mean, it's sanctioned now. It's legit. You know, they have like a legit way to uh, run this. And they, they take it very seriously. And what's really cool about it is, is like there's people like Scott Wong flying from California, not once, but twice now because right. they've done two games. Uh, I flew down to, to Miami from New Jersey to do this. Um, we drove to Virginia last time. So there, these people are showing up and they're putting this thing together. And it's, you know, they're, it, it's, it's all community again. You know, it's, it's the Mace community coming together. Yeah. But, they're doing 300s or 10 and 2s. They're calling them 300s. 
360s. They're doing club mills. They're doing one-handed sprints. They're doing two-handed. I competed in the two-hand 300. I did 25 pounds for five minutes. I went as fast and as hard as I could, and I, and I didn't do that when I was in training, so I was <laughs> in for a big surprise because I couldn't even move my hands when I was done. Oh, man. Um, but it is so fun. They have big plans. They want to add other things to it, vintage strength. You know, so they're thinking like uh, old-fashioned dumbbells with the fat handles. Mm. Um, and I even heard like little blurbs of like, well, how would we do flow? You know, and there's a lot of people saying stuff like, you know, maybe you could, um, you can uh, basically have c- competitors, like it's as if it was figure skating. So you, people right. would judge it like that. That's all in the works. But the more people that jump in on this and get involved, the better it is for the MACE community as a whole, because this is like an official sport now. And, you know, I could see this in powerlifting gyms and things like that. So uh, it's a whole other side of the steel MACE that, has yet to explode and and it's exciting man that that would be incredible uh and and i'm glad you went over there kind of heard little glimpses of that of having flow at this thing like that would be like amazing right i think that would totally like we're always throwing around mace unity that would be like the greatest most epic thing to happen yeah absolutely i mean you know if 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 right now if they're just um knocking it around that's that's great you know as long as they're talking about it I believe it could happen, you know, so, um, you know, let the chips fall where they may, but they definitely are off to the races within two, within less than, you know, they did two competitions in less than a year. It was August and then, and then, um, February. So they, it's like night and day from the first one to the second one. And, you know, they're planning the next one. It's, uh, Tampa, uh, Tampa in Florida on the 29th of August. So that's going to be the third one. And, you know, a few more people always keep coming. More people keep showing up. And, yeah, I had the opportunity to set up the podcast and do a remote podcast and um, interview everybody that was there. It's sort of like ESPN. (laughs) Uh, (laughs) Scott Wong comes in off of doing some heat. Like he competed in like five different events. And he comes, he's dripping sweat and we're in the back room and I got to close the door because it was so noisy and it was like getting hot in there and he's sweating oh, and, he's, man. and it was just like, you know, the, like the ESPN the guy coming in off the court and hitting him up <laughs> with a bunch of questions. And, um, it was a lot of fun, a lot of fun. Yeah. Scott Wong is hella strong. I've seen his stuff online and then I saw, I, he won, right? He, well, um, he, he won some stuff. Was, okay. It, so Brad, Val, you know, the, uh, they're the top contenders. Right. The, the, the way they have it set up now is really cool because you can play the game of strategy here. You know, like, you know, you don't necessarily have to flat out win this or that. Mm. Um, you could enter, like, I only entered one heat. Brad entered all of them. Okay, so oh, wow. it sounded like as if, if for six heats, his, his um, intention was to start heavy, and then as he goes through – go lighter and lighter. Uh, but the idea is that you accumulate points over everything. Mm. And then you, you know, if you keep showing up at the games one after another, those, all those points stack up. So at the end of say a year, a person can actually become the overall champion. However, Uh, that, that event works. So that's, what's so cool about it. You know, if you enter it with a strategy, you could still, pull ahead pretty well even if there's other people that are stronger than you wow yeah yeah i was i was looking at all that and i was just blown away every time they post stuff on it and it's it's a whole nother world and i'm, I'm really glad that they're putting it together i'm glad you're out there yeah. you know filming the stuff interviewing you you know we need more people like you like me i mean hopefully more people start doing uh no, you know more still mace podcasts which kind of leads me to that as well yeah. You know, if you want to talk a little bit about that, uh, we're probably the only two that are actually doing a podcast straight up on Still Mace and then everyone else is just kind of like a mixture. You know? Yeah. Yeah, you're right. Some some of the podcasts out there, they'll touch on the Steel Mace and that's like a an episode or a segment or something like that. Right. Um, and with me and you, it's like, well, let's talk Steel Mace. Let's talk <laughs> Steel Mace. Um, but I do try to push the – the edges out a little bit. I do rebel against my own, my own <laughs> self here. Uh, you know, and I've told the audience before, like, Hey, I'm going to challenge you guys with, with 
different things as time goes by. I had one of my favorite podcasts was with a, a, a friend of mine. She actually helped me sell uh, a house and, and uh, you know, she's a realtor, but she was, I noticed she had this great talent with mindset and I'm very much into mindset. I like, I like exploring mindset and how to think positively and use that and utilize that in ways to improve your life. And I had her come on the podcast. She doesn't even touch a mace, you know? <laughs> right and and I, I wagged my finger at her. I said, you know, like, we're, we're not going to hold that against you, but you should be using a mace. <laughs> uh, but, you know, she came on the podcast to talk about mindset. And isn't, you know, a lot of what we do with the steel mace doesn't always c- kind of go back to mindset and, right. and, and the mental aspect. So it's great to be able to explore that. And like your podcast, um, when I started listening to yours, I noticed, you know, it was so interesting, really, when you dug in and found out who the person was before the, the mace. Right. And, and like I said earlier, the mace is like, a, like it, it signifies a start of a new chapter in everybody's life. Yeah, it's, yeah, yeah, I, yeah. Don't know, I don't know what it is. It's just a mace. It's just a piece of metal. But people can relate back a year later and go, well, that's when I picked up the mace. And that's when all this started happening and all that started happening. It is a significant marker in a person's life, you know, a book, a bookmark, if you will. And um, it's, isn't it fascinating just tapping into what a person did before that? Yeah, that's that's what the that's what my podcast is all about. It's the warrior journey, right? Yeah. I feel like that's the for me that's like the warrior barker. Like that's when they became this whole new other person or this something major changed, something shifted, right? Yes. And uh, kind of leads me to you know what? Let's go back a little bit with you, really quickly. Let's just go back. Like, what were you doing before the still mace? I mean, obviously you're a firefighter, but what were you doing? Yeah, I, well, tra- I mean, training wise, I was just doing. Um, a lot of mountain biking. I still love mountain biking. Um, and, and just regular old strength training, you know, um, mixing it up every once in a while. Um, and I always had, you know, an interest in martial arts and things like that. You know, I've taken classes and I always used to watch the, the, the Kung Fu movies that were on on Saturdays when I was a kid. And, um, I always thought that, you know, it was cool what, you know, martial, what they do in martial arts. So, uh, the mace, you know, just kind of hearkened to me, like, I, that's the way I looked at it as, as strength training mixed or, you know, yeah, strength training and mobility training mixed with martial arts a little bit. Uh, but yeah, that's what I was doing before. Um, just plunk it away at being a firefighter and, and um, taking the captain's test over and over again, trying to get promoted, which um, I was finally able to achieve. Just, I just got recently promoted to captain. Wow. And, um, Congrats. Thanks. So, I mean, it was a big <laughs> achievement for me. And, and I take it very seriously, you know, uh, being in a leadership role. And so I spend a lot of time uh, digesting information uh, from books and everything, you know, from Navy SEALs and stuff like that, you know, how to, how to be a, a, a good leader. And, and um, a lot of it is being humble, uh, showing a lot of humility, uh, admitting when you don't know something. And that's steel mace right there. It humbles right. you. Right. Uh, and, and that's one of the things I want to get to get into with episode 50 is, is how I've learned that the steel mace, um, helps me become a better leader on the fire ground. Uh, but I love the fire department. I've, I, I always wanted to be a fireman since I was a little kid. And um, <laughs> to get there was a huge, huge journey. And it was questionable all the way. And uh, like you like to explore the warrior's journey. And I love that. I love that concept because I think if people – accept that as as a way of life like being a warrior you're always venturing into the unknown and you know that's scary Mm -hmm. and the warrior is not somebody who's uh not afraid but they're not going to let that fear slow them down and they're going to venture into the unknown despite their fear and that's life man that's the way everything is and if you could if you could find the steel mace as a way to get into that mindset, then that's it right there. Whatever it takes, but I think the steel mace is a great way to do it. 
Right on. Yeah, wow. <laughs> you got some great words, man. I'm not going to lie. Shit. <laughs> uh, no, but yeah, uh, I think I, I want to go a little bit into Still Mace Flow with you because I, it, yeah. that's, I, I mean, obviously, I mean, talking to you right now, I feel like you're really open, which is awesome. I, I love that almost every guest that I've had on here is super open. They do a little bit of everything. Uh, do, do you just do flow? Do you do, uh, you know, are, are you, I mean, obviously you did vintage strength, so you're doing some traditional stuff, but let's talk a little bit about that. Like what's your, you know, your routine? What, what is it that you tend to kind of lean towards? Yeah. Um, well, I've been kind of ping ponging around, um, flow literally, you know, just souped me up and, and brought me out. You know, um, I, the, my first thing I ever learned what a mace was, was, the 360 but prior to that i was doing i would i learned mills with a club and that was to help with my shoulders because typical you know i wear a tank on my back i bench press weight my shoulders are rolled forward my you know everything's collapsed over my back and my neck are killing me so my trainer was like here do these mills so i'm doing mills with a club and I see the mace and I'm seeing mace on Instagram and I'm like, what the hell is that? <laughs> and then he teaches me a 360 and I literally did maybe 10 swings and I felt like I had an awesome massage. Like my back just completely just let go and my shoulders were relaxed. And It opened you up. Oh my God. Yeah. And, and, and it actually created a positive mentality right away. I mean, when you're hunched over, like this all the time yeah, and you got yeah. that stiff pain it, it's like you're bearing the weight of the world and you, you start to have like negative mindset a little bit and when i opened that up and i said oh, it's as easy as that and i didn't have to pay 60 bucks for a massage that once i walk <laughs> out of the building it's it's all tight again <laughs> that, right. that's what would happen every time yeah. and and there i am you know just swinging a mace and i and then i started looking on instagram and oh my god, you know what that's like, <laughs> right? <laughs> it's endless. Like, yeah, totally endless. And it's like two o'clock in the morning. I got to go to bed, and I'm watching Leo Savage, and I'm like, look at this guy. I'm like, what is he even doing? And um, man, you know, I'll tell you, like, you got to live your life open. You you got to. Um, I'm not afraid to admit, like, I can't, I can't dance. But if I can move even <sighs> half as good as Leo, that's like going to be my dancing or whatever you want to call it. Yeah, yeah, It's awesome. It's awesome movement. So I, I jumped in on that and, uh, I said, well, I'm just, uh, well, I, I actually was copying what I saw on video, but then I took the new breed mace certification, right. which, cause it was like, it was, it was cheaper and it was, it, it was just something I could do right away. And, uh, and I was blown away by the new breed, sir, because that uh, shit's different, right? Oh, yeah. That's just explosive. That's like high intensity with the mace. It's completely different. Right. And to be able to, you know, you could learn it and start coaching people right away with it, which is great. And yeah. meanwhile, I, I was like, okay, flow is a little different and that's going to be harder for people to take in right away. But I went, I got my steel mace flow level one and, um, continued with that and, just it, things just got, you know, that was by the summer of 2019 and, and uh, you know, steel mace flow coaches coming out of the woodwork, coming up to the gym, Jamie, uh, Jamie Pinto came up mm. um, and, and um, Charles Sconia, uh, they were, they came up and just, uh, I would, I, I went into New York city to uh, Birch and Braun, Birch and Braun is in New York city, uh, uh, Steven. Um, and I, I trained with him for a little bit, you know, and, and just like, and I was like, this is so cool, man. I'm meeting these awesome people and I'm just enjoying myself and it's all in the name of fitness and just feeling good. And, and I just noticed a, a better attitude. I had a much better attitude. Um, but then of course I said, oh, well look, there's 15 and 20 pound maces and there's oh the the quad god look at that thing oh, oh what's god. this an addix oh and then i'm just <laughs> like i you know and now i have like mace add i'm doing tons of different things um yesterday at the firehouse i was i was just doing a light workout and a, a light workout that you know with a 10 pound mace and i was just doing one arm swings and then I said, uh, you know what? And I went out to my truck and I grabbed my, my 25 pound and I started swinging heavy mace. So it's all over the place. 
That's so awesome, man. Yeah, you know, I myself have not been able to get past 15 just because I'm having some health issues right now. But, you know, that I think for me, that's definitely a goal reaching that, you know, at 20 or that 25 and maybe one day purchasing the quad. But for me, it's like uh, when it comes to the quad maze, I'm like, you got to earn that shit. That's yeah. why I don't, I don't have it. I haven't I, I could easily buy it tomorrow. But I'm like, no, I'm not ready for that. It's a very unique uh, mace. I mean, the wood handle, it's a fat handle, which is pretty cool, but it's and, wood. And it's bamboo, right? Isn't it? I don't know if it's bamboo. I, I have no idea. No, I think it's just like more like a, like a solid piece of hard wood. It's huge wood. though. Yeah, yeah. It's really thick. Yeah, yeah. And then I've, I've swung, um, like, like you just said, bamboo ones, which are really cool. And um, I think you had her on as a guest, Kelly, Kelly Manzone. Oh, hell yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, you know, I took one of her workshops and she had a swing in these gata with the bamboo mm -hmm. and she is just so jazzed up and she's so electric and she's talking about how the bamboo feels in your hand and how that translates over to the movement patterns and everything. And I'm almost like looking at her like, hey, are you taking this a little too far? And then I start <laughs> swinging and I'm swinging like uh, 20 pound with one arm and it just no problem. And the way it felt in my hand, and I was like, she's right. You know, so this is what's so amazing. Uh, bamboo, wood, steel, um, you know, different size diameters and everything like that. It really opens up what you could do as far as training is concerned. And it's really cool. And it's endless, too. Yeah. Have you tried the ones that fill up with water? The water loadable ones? No, no, I haven't oh, even tried that yet. Oh, my God. Yeah, Mr. Mason had let me try his uh, yeah, when I went out to... Dude, that's like you're holding up water in the sky. It's it's a whole like it's it's I was like, no, I can't do this. I like I try to keep a positive mindset and tell myself I can, but that one was a whole nother, I don't know, experience and I loved it. And maybe in the future I'll buy one. But yeah, those water fillable ones, the best way I can describe it is you're holding up water on a yeah. fucking stick. Literally. Yeah. Well, you know, uh, be, uh become stronger industries, pay. Yeah. Is, uh, become stronger. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. I purchased a uh, loadable with from him, 20 pounds, and you can load it with steel shot. And uh, yeah, that slosh effect is really awesome. It's, <laughs> it, and that's a whole other way you could augment your training. Funny story about that was, you know, the mace comes, but you have to order the shot. So I found a company online and it was like a minimum of 40 pounds of shot. And I really only needed like five pounds. I said, yeah. all right, I'll just order the 40. And, <laughs> and they sent it in the mail. Now, my mailman, I think he wants to kill me nowadays because I got <laughs> maces coming to the house and this friggin' lead shot, 40 pounds. My doorbell rings. And, you know, he's like right on the verge of retirement. He looks like Santa Claus. Poor thing. <laughs> yeah. And he goes, he, he you know, he... I answer the door and there he, he's standing, he's sweating. He goes, Jesus Christ, Freddie, what do you got? And I look <laughs> and he left the box in the driveway, middle of the middle of the driveway. And he couldn't come up. And I, and I, you know what I said to him? I said, you need to work out more, bro. <laughs> <laughs> he, he wanted to punch me in the face. I, I gave him a good Christmas tip that year. So, I mean, it, it's all, it's all for good, but oh, um, Lord. yeah, the, the, I loaded up with, with the five pounds a shot and that, that's an awesome thing to, to swing around. So, I mean, the whole arsenal is great, you know, and even just using a sledgehammer now is, is fun. You know, at, at yeah. the firehouse, we got sledgehammers on the rig and I'll just grab one and start swinging it. And everybody's like, ah, oh, geez, here we go. Yeah. <laughs> here it goes, Fred. <laughs> yeah. That's awesome. Well, I mean, I guess just to, just to, to end this, uh, the only other question I have is, or I guess, something that you can tell the listeners, uh, you know, if someone's just picking up a still mace, uh, you know, what can you, what kind, what do you recommend? What's your advice on that? Uh, they're just beginning, never picked up a mace. Well, you know, um, I'm noticing a lot of, sometimes 10 pound is a struggle for people, even dudes, you know, um, they, they can kind of, they always say, well, start with a 10. I, I say get a 10 and a 7 unless you're just a pretty decently healthy shape and you already work out and stuff. Um, it's not that much more money to, to, to buy the two. Um, you know, um, I, I mean, like, I guess you could get an adjustable mace like the Addicts, but, um, you know, it, I, 
as a starter mace, a 10 and a seven is good. And, um, just to basically make sure that you're, you're using it properly. So watch, watch a lot of video, go on YouTube. Um, I know on your YouTube channel, there's, you're showing people how to do workouts and stuff. Um, so I mean, you know, just check it out, make sure you're doing it right. Don't you have some, some videos coming out too? Yes, I do. Sorry for breaking you up there. I I really want you to talk about that. I don't want to forget to talk about that. Yeah. Well, I'm going to be releasing, um, just like, you know, like kind of similar to, to what you've done. Um, just, uh, just me working out, doing some simple stuff, uh, just to, to, you know, as, as beginners, as they come through and discover the mace, uh, they might come across you first. They might come across me first, wherever they come across, you know, us coaches, you know, it's our job to make sure that they're doing it right. And so, yeah, I'm going to be releasing videos and everything. And then um, I intend on releasing uh, actual firefighter workout video. Yeah. So that's going to be cool because it's going to be kind of like new breed style meets uh, steel mace flow and and just, you know, things that I find help me on the fire ground. Um, So I, you know, I'm looking forward to putting that out because after 16 years on the job and everything, I've figured out a lot of ways to keep my longevity going and optimize my fitness. And, and I think that, you know, it's, it's been, it's been a a kind of like a discovery process. Once the steel base came along, I said, this is going to be my thing right here. This is where I'm going to be able to contribute to the fire service and contribute something to the steel mace community and tie it all together. So yeah, that's all going to be coming out. Um, People can check out episode number 50 when it drops. I'll be talking about that again. Um, and yeah, the, the videos will be on my YouTube channel, Steel Mace Nation podcast on YouTube. Right on. Now, where else can they find you? Uh, website, Instagram, Facebook, right? Yep. SteelMaceNation.com, uh, at Steel Mace Nation on Instagram, Instagram, and I'm also at Steel Mace Firefighter on Instagram. Right. Uh, okay. Facebook, I'm under frederick moore or steel mace nation all right and then obviously you're a coach so if someone wants to work with you where where are you from and where are you located you work at a gym or um you want i'm in uh i'm in the jersey shore area but um i'm all over new jersey i i i work in elizabeth which is north jersey so i actually coach out of uh a gym in cranford called um um king performance and um i i train out of there and then the jersey shore i'm training out of critical mass and i'm also teaching a more intimate class in a in a yoga studio it's only four people because that's all we could fit but they have awesome cork floors and we do a nice slow um not yoga mace although i do incorporate some yoga um but it's just, you know, a mellow kind of mace flow, very, very genteel like, and, um, they love it over there. So I'm, I'm getting opportunity (laughs) to teach all different styles and ways in the area. And, you know, um, people could DM me on Instagram at steel mace nation and, and they can hook up with me. Uh, I coach people at their houses and stuff like that. And, uh, and over at, uh, firehouses too, especially volunteers, um, I, I want to get back to the volunteers. Um, I know how hard the job is and I get paid for it. I can't imagine these guys doing it for, for nothing. And if I could give back to them and keep them safe and healthy and happy, uh, I will, you know, and, um, I do a, a lot of sometimes seminars for, and workshops with volunteers for free just to get, you know, just to show them what they could do with it. So anybody wants right to hit on. me up for that, we could talk about it and make it happen. Right on, man. This was definitely one of the most uh, unique uh, podcast episodes, hands down. Yeah, hands definitely. Down. I love thank it. It's you. special. Well, well, thank you for being on here. Really, really appreciate it. Thank you for saying yes. I, I'm super grateful, uh, you know, honored to have you on here. And uh, may the universe always flow with you. And you too. And thank you for all the inspiration. Keep doing what you're doing. You're awesome at it. Oh, and before we go, I got I to gotta say, I loved when you drop that tune, Hotel 666. (laughs) That song is incredible. You are incredibly talented. I must have listened to that a hundred times. I I couldn't, I like, I couldn't believe it. I'm like, and the video is cool and everything. I was just like blown away by it. I hope you're going to be doing more music as time goes on. 
It's going to yeah, be fun sure. watching you. For sure. Well, I'm glad you mentioned that. It's, it's funny. I, I don't think about it much and it's, it's been a big part of my life, but hopefully, I don't know, hopefully I get on your podcast soon and we can talk a little bit more about that. Yeah, definitely. I'll be all hitting right. you up soon and we'll arrange it. All right. All right. Right on. Thank right. you again. All right. Take care. Bye.